renovated retirement with charlie jewett oh no i think i'm about to have another episode hey folks it's charlie jewett here doing a quick episode 101 because the dow jones has risen above 24,500. again markets are at all-time highs the markets are going up and up and up and of course of course we know we know that they're going to go up forever, which is why it's really smart to leave your money there and never move it to anything more conservative, even if the conservative things have made more money than the market anyway. Anyway, back to you. Should you leave your money in the market? Certainly, you shouldn't leave all of your money. Keep this in mind. Listen, by the way, I interrupted myself. That wasn't an editing mistake. I actually interrupted myself and turned on a dime mid-sentence. I do that sometimes. Listen. By definition, the money that you have in your retirement account at work, your TSP, your uh, 401k, 403b, 457, you're basically forced to put it at risk. The only thing they let you buy is stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Usually mutual funds, which is a crappy place to put your money unless you know how to uh, day trade and buy and sell and study. I mean, it's just not for people, in my opinion, it's not for people with more than twenty-five dollars to $50,000. Much better options out there. Also, the market has underperformed annuities and life insurance when built properly. But inside of retirement accounts, where your big money is oftentimes, you're forced to put that money at risk. Doesn't that mean the rest of the money in your life, your home equity, your your um, Roth IRA money, your IRA money, your non-qualified investments, meaning you're not uh, sharing your, the, the after-tax money you have in your life, the IRS isn't involved, doesn't that mean that should be more conservative if your retirement account is forced to be at risk? Folks, the title of this episode is The Market is Going to Go Up Until It Doesn't. And why am I saying that? Because it's like our country's on crack. I don't understand it. The market's been going up, 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 up forever. It's like 60 or 70 months past the average length of a bull market. More than double the time the market usually goes up for before it drops by 27% on average. And people are still investing every week or every two weeks in their paychecks even if they're unmatched they're just jamming money in the market risk with a side of fees hope it works out i sure hope it works out because hope is a financial plan and they're leaving their balances if you're over 59 and a half you're allowed to move your 401k why would you leave money and if you have money if you're still working and you are over 59 and a half and you have money in a 401k a 457 a tsp or a, a 403B, I want you to get in touch with me immediately. Go to jewettwealth.com, J-E-W-E-T-T wealth.com, or email me, charlie at jewettwealth.com. If you're still working, or you have an old 401k from an old job or an old 457, but you're over 59 and a half and still working for a company and have a whole bunch of money jammed into the retirement account, get in touch with me immediately. You're allowed to move that to something with way less fees or no fees, you don't have to use mutual funds. You're not going to be stuck in an oversold market because the problem is this. Markets go up and down. It doesn't make any sense for people to leave money in the market just because it's going to go up, 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 up when it's higher than it's ever been. Things have never been this expensive ever. Buy now. Nothing else is sold that way. You don't buy couches when they're most expensive. You don't buy anything when it's most expensive. You wait for the prices to drop, right? So what am I... What's an analogy here? Let's talk about um, car insurance, okay? So why do you carry car insurance? Well, what if you've never been in an accident? Well, you're not going to be in an accident until you are. And maybe you'll never be in an accident. And I'm sorry if you can hear my phone ringing. I can't talk and figure out how to turn this thing off at the same time. But whatever, it's sort of a live show. Uh, you're going to drive your car and not be in an accident until you are. <laughs> what about fire insurance? Or until someone else hits you, by the way. Just like you don't control the market, you don't control drunk drivers, people that run red lights, people that text while they're driving, people who are fighting with their kids or spouse. You don't control the stupid activities of other drivers. In most accidents, one person's at fault. So if you're like a superstar, incredible driver, never expect to be in an accident that's your fault, doesn't mean you won't be in an accident and sustain damage or bodily injury, or maybe not be able to work anymore. So you carry automobile insurance just in case that happens. What about fire insurance? Your house is not going to burn down unless it does. You're not going to get cancer unless you do. Your teenage girl is not going to get pregnant unless she does. Or maybe grandchild. Folks, 
all of these things. It's never intelligent to say, I don't think anything will ever go wrong. Remember, plan for the worst, hope for the best. Why don't you plan for the market to crash for the rest of your life, but put yourself in a position where if it goes up for the rest of your life, just by some strange coincidence, you make a ton of money, but you can never lose any. That's called an indexed annuity, by the way where you get half of the market when it goes up and no losses when it goes down, ever, and no fees, ever. Wait a minute, Charlie, that sounds too good to be true. A lot of things sound too good to be true. Wait a minute, I never fly into the sun, gravity always pulls me towards the earth, and I never fly into the sun and get burned up? Forks never fly out of the drawers and stab me in the eyes? Cows never fly through the sky and go through my roof? No, that sounds too good to be true. No. It's not too good to be true. It's just the basics of the way things actually work, just like things actually exist and have for 20 or 30 years. Risk is optional. You don't have to take risks. Do you hear me? You do not have to take risks. The higher the market goes, the riskier it gets. You're, every day that goes on, you're one day closer to the crash where you lose 27, 30, 40, 50 percent or whatever, depending on how you're allocated. And I mean, should I even mention that over this amazing time of growth, uh, let's talk about from 2000 until 2016, that annuities and life insurance have beat the growth of the stock market anyway? What are you doing? What are you doing? Putting money in and leaving money somewhere that has risk, fees, and worse performance than places that have no downside risk when the market goes down, no fees or low fees, and better performance. The Joker brokers and the media and the people that like to sell books have put our country in a trance where we need the market. We're addicted to the stock market, and the stock market is doing a worse job than the other tools, and it costs more and has more risk. It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like saying, why don't you, why don't you walk across the bridge on a tightrope wire and get to the other side? I'll give you 20 bucks. But if you walk across on the street, I'll give you 50 bucks. Why would you risk your life to make less money? It'd be different if they said walk across on a tightrope and you get a million dollars, walk across on the bridge and you get a hundred. I'd understand that. Maybe it's worth the risk if you practice tightrope walking. But why would you leave money in the market for worse returns, higher fees, and more risk? It's never been, you've, you've never been at more risk of losing money than now that the markets are at all-time highs. Why don't we just be intelligent about this? Let's, let's, Let's look at your portfolio. Let's look at the job you've done or how you're saving or how much you've saved and ask the most basic question first, which is, do you even need the stock market? I did a podcast called You Passed the Tractor Hours Ago. Why are you still in the wrong lane? Sometimes it makes sense to take risk. When I'm passing a slow car on a two-lane road, I wait for there to be no cars on the left-hand side or on the other lane. I get in the wrong lane. I speed sometimes faster than this, uh, the speed limit. And then I look in my rearview mirror, and when I've passed that slow car or tractor or whatever it is, I get back over in the safe lane. There's a time for risk, for very high probability moves that you need to make. Sticking money in the market and crossing your fingers, hope is not a financial plan. Why don't we just look at your portfolio, look at your retirement plan. I'll do it for you. I'll do it with you, or my team will. And just say, do you even need the stock market anymore? Do you know how many people I review their portfolio? So you have enough money to never risk a dollar ever again for the rest of your life. You could almost just live off of it, taking 4 or 5% and die when it hits zero. You don't need to. We can do a lot better than that. But you don't even have to think about the stock market ever again unless you enjoy it. They didn't know that. I'm setting them free. Or what about people that don't have enough money? And they go, I haven't saved enough money. Don't I have to use the stock market and just gamble to have any hope of retirement? No. Those are the people more than anybody that need to know the stock market isn't even doing a good job. It's not even making as much as the alternatives. It's certainly not providing guaranteed income backed by the insurance companies that back the pensions your parents and grandparents lived on. Well, that's not guaranteed, Charlie. There's things that can happen. Yeah, once an insurance company goes out of business and people lose their pensions, then you can talk to me, smart guy. And I'm not trying to protect people against things that have never happened. I'm trying to protect people against the things that happen all the time, like running out of money and having to go work for Walmart or some company or job that you don't want in the middle of your 70s and 80s. Folks, get in touch with me, charlie at jewettwealth.com, C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T, wealth.com, or just go look up Charlie Jewett on Google, C-H-A-R-L-I-E, J-E-W-E-T-T. -T. I think I'm the first 
three pages now or whatever and find me somewhere, get to one of my websites, hit a contact form, get in touch and let's just look at it. You, you probably don't even need the market, but you're going, what else would I do? When you have the answer to that question, which is really easy, I'll introduce you to four videos I have that are hidden on my website. I'll just let you watch you know, whichever video is appropriate for you. You learn everything you need to know. I provide a windshield for you to see so clearly. You don't have to listen to me or trust me. You just get all the information you need to make your own decisions. I've helped hundreds of people this way. You just make your own decision when there's things that pay more than the stock market for no fees or low fees, and they don't have the risk of downside where you can't lose the money. It's a pretty easy decision. Get in touch. Charlie at JewettWealth.com. And that's a quick rant because that's what I felt like doing. And I still can't move very much because my knee hurts. But anyway, I love it. I love it. And I love you because you people are the best. Now that there episode was short and sweet. Renovate. Retirement. With Charlie Jewett. That's all, folks.